But first, we're talking about the SFL, the Street Fighter League. Hello, Street Fighter fans. The way this works is they announce there's going to be three parts. Uh, it's going to be split into two seasons, and then there's going to be a finals at the end of the year. Uh, the first season is starting in April. The second season starts in August, and then the finals at the end of the year, I believe they said, are in November, culminating in the first North American Pro League champion. Uh, the way it works is it's going to be teams of three, and they said they're going to select the team captains based on uh, the CPT leaderboard. They didn't say whether it's going to be global or regional in the U.S., but this is a North America-based uh, selection process, uh, which I think a lot of people are excited about it being a 3v3 tournament, right? And I also think that it's cool that it's something outside of CPT. One thing that Capcom always has always had the leg up on everybody else is that they've always had Capcom Pro Tour establish and out there and it exists if you think about the other tours usually they're a little they're compared to the cpt they're behind on launching or they don't have as like fully fleshed out of a tour as maybe some of the other games like if you think about the dragon ball tour it just kind of sprung up this year so cpt has always had the advantage in being like the most concrete put together like well operating tour. As far as the SFL goes, I think it's really cool that they're doing more CPT stuff outside of Capcom Pro Tour. Because, or I guess I should say Capcom is doing more events outside of Capcom Pro Tour. Because they've always had CPT, but doing events outside of it with Capcom's like, you know, actually being involved with it is cool. They've had stuff like E-League and they've had stuff like the ESL events and they've had stuff uh, with other companies that I've always thought were like different and, and interesting. So what I like is that this is different than the format that we usually get, which is like standard CPT, two out of three open bracket tournament, three out of five top eight. That's what we usually have for CPT events. And so I think it's cool. Yeah, the Red Bull Tower of Pride. A lot of people are bringing up good examples of other things. I think this league is cool because it's a good way for them to try and do something different outside of the CPT. And in fact, one of the big things they mentioned is they want it to be all the team captains to be a top ranked players on the leaderboard and then kind of pull from the talent inside the region by pulling other players that are, you know, up and coming, like somebody who's qualified and somebody who's kind of like an up and up and coming player who could use like the bump in being on a team like this and getting to play with some really strong players and getting to, you know, have a chance at competing in something like this. I think that's a cool idea. Uh, I think there are some issues with it. For one, there's a ban system in place. The way it works is a 3v3 event, and then both teams get to decide a ban, a character ban. And that character is just not playable by the other team. Uh, the other thing is, in terms of formatting, is that I think everybody has to play a different character on the team. So you can't have a team Karen, Karen, Karen. I think that that part is fine. I don't mind that so much. I think a lot of people dislike the ban system. Uh, since it's, it's something like traditional MOBAs, right where you know you ban different characters from different people and stuff but in fighting games people usually tend to focus on one character and if they have secondary characters they're usually not as developed as other characters in mobas you have five six seven eight champions or heroes that you're familiar with so then banning out two of them or something is not the end of the world it's pretty hard for them to target ban and just remove all the champions or heroes you can play from the team and if they do that there's four other people that you know can play different um characters uh in terms of fighting games this is very unusual and i don't hate the ban system i don't think it's like the worst thing ever because i think there's some interesting ideas like let's say you're fighting justin's team and justin's team is like justin and it's like i don't know item and it's like someone else that's a character specialist like um 801 strider so you have like a g character specialist you have like a laura character specialist and you have justin who can play a bunch of characters like, do you ban Justin's Minot and then just make him go on to a secondary character? Or do you ban one of the other players and let Justin have his main character? You know, it's like that's kind of the decision making in it. I don't think it's like the decision making is like cool enough to justify the bans because I would kind of just like to see it as like a regular 3v3 format. But I think that their idea here is to make kind of put like different or interesting or try something weird with the rules to make it so that it's not just like the CPT, which is competition like open bracket normal fighting game stuff this is their attempt to try something that's like different or unique or weird or like breaks the the format the mold of the formats that they've tried before um so i'm hoping that maybe they roll back on the band system or uh even if they don't roll back on the band system if that you know at least we get some good matches because of it um but yeah i think it's a cool idea. 
maybe it's not what I want. Maybe it's not what you guys want. But I think we'll end up getting some good matches. And I think people will get cool opportunities because of it. Like uh, different players from the scene will get to like fly out and compete and play against guys like, you know, Justin or whoever who you might run into in an open bracket tournament. You might not. Uh, so I think it's probably... You know, you have to, when I think about it, I'm thinking about, like, the good versus the bad, right? Versus, like, which is better. And, um, yeah, I think this is a cool idea. I see people, like, throwing a fit on social media. They're like, this is just the worst. And I don't think it's that bad. I think it was a cool try. Maybe it's not the format that we want. Um, but it's something different. And I usually always like watching team tournaments anyway. So, I'm all right with it. I'll, what cracks me up is that there's there's always so many people that are like, you know, this is just ruining fighting games. <laughs> this is just the end of the world. I don't know. People are very dramatic. The other thing is that it's on Thursdays, uh, which I wonder how that's going to work in terms of tournaments that day, right? So let's say that, you know, it starts in April. So Combo Breaker is Memorial Day weekend in May. And let's say that the Street Fighter League is going on that weekend. When they have to play Thursdays, like, where is the league being played at? Is the league being played online? Is it being played offline somewhere? What's, like, you know, the deal with that? Um, who knows? Like, nobody's, you know, that part isn't set, set in stone. And once they play in this league or whatever, are they going to have time to fly out to an event like Combo Breaker? Or are they going to have time to fly out to whatever tournament they want to attend for the CPT or whatever like that? You know what I mean? Or is this going to be one of those things where... They play it, and then they air it at a different time. You know? I don't know. It gives us more Street Fighter to watch, so I'm excited for that.